Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome DARPA geologist Stephanie Tompkins. So we've been talking a lot these past couple of days about the subject of complexity. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to harness the powers of biology or whether you're trying to build a military system of systems of systems. It seems like we're all struggling to handle all of the interconnections, the interfaces, the interactions, and the interdependencies among the way, way too many parts that seem to make up these complex systems. We've also heard some really great strategies for how to deal with them. But I think there's at least two aspects of complexity that we want to try to tackle at a much more foundational level. Uncertainty and representation. So let's start with uncertainty. Why do we care? Well, if you build things, and I think a lot of you guys do, you know that uncertainty is one of the most costly manifestations of complexity. So consider, for example, one of the most complex engineered systems known to man, a submarine. We're actually contemplating building submarines that would have 200, over 200 subsystems made up of over 40,000 components made up themselves of over 2 million individual parts. And we all know these different pieces don't live in isolation. But then consider this. Of all of the thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of interactions and interdependencies among these different elements, the very best we can do is keep track of a couple hundred at a time in a believable uh, physics-based model. So in that case, it shouldn't be at all surprising that it actually takes between seven to 10 years to design a submarine. And when we actually finish building one, we're so worried about making any changes, we can barely upgrade it because we can't predict what's going to happen when we do make those changes. So imagine instead what might be possible if we could actually track, instead of a couple hundred variables, a million at a time and propagate the uncertainty through the model and actually start to predict what's really going to happen. OK, so that's uncertainty. Let's switch over and talk about representation, which at some level is even more foundational a problem. Think about the data that we are gathering today and think about how we represent it. We have greater and greater capability to take measurements at higher spatial resolution, higher temporal resolution, um, more and more modalities. We could store it all. We store it in things like spreadsheets. We store it in uh, image files, Word documents. And yet, our ability to actually make intelligent connections and to build hypotheses out of these complex and heterogeneous data sets um, is really still best done by a really smart graduate student with a lot of patience and some time. So let's think of a scientific example this time. Let's say that you wanted to um, look for connections between your behavior, the structure of your brain, the microbes in your gut, and you know, your DNA, which we think there might actually be some connections. And I think most of us believe that it's not impossible that we could take the measurements we need and gather the data to start to answer that question. But we're all sort of terrified about how we would actually go about making those connections intelligently in reasonable amounts of time. And we actually think that one way we can start to tackle that is to change how we represent data. Sounds a little bit kind of like magical thinking, maybe too magical. But consider this. Would you rather be doing arithmetic with numbers that look like this or with numbers that look like this? So when we went from Roman to Arabic numerals, we completely changed the power of mathematics to both to describe and explain and help model and predict the physical world. And our assertion, or our hypothesis, hypothesis at least, is that the way that we represent data today is very much in the Roman numeral stage, and we're trying to get out of that. So how do we do it? Both for uncertainty and representation, uh, we've been spending a lot of time exploring the frontiers of mathematics. I mean, the far frontiers of mathematics. It can be a pretty scary place for those of you that have, have had a chance to visit. Um, and there's actually a lot of breakthroughs that have been occurring just even in the last decade that give us a lot of hope. You got a glimpse of some of those from Gunnar Carlson when he was talking on Wednesday about the shape of data. Think about those data shapes that he was showing and imagine projecting all these disparate and heterogeneous types of data into some space where you can actually start to find alignment and connections. And then you can start to automatically generate hypotheses, mathematically probe heterogeneous data sets, and completely change the way that we start to discover um, structure and complexity in this world that we live in. Imagine also if you can use some of those same rules about the shape of data 
to in fact take small subsets of local measurements and project them globally to actually know exactly what's happening across a much larger and complex space. The shape and the reprojection and the reconnections of all these pieces are part of what's been bubbling out there um, in, in the geometric and topological mathematical fields, and we think the time is ripe to start to harness them, and we know the time is ripe to tackle these problems as they start to get more and more um, amazingly complex around us. So I have to warn you, we are at the very beginning of this process. We are just now working to take math for mathematicians and translate it into tools for all the rest of us. It's a little bit of a scary space to be in, but I want you to think about what that would do if we were successful. Imagine how it would change the way we could make new discoveries, how we would design and build systems, how we would actually create and prevent strategic surprise. Think about your own lives, everything that you do and every day and how it might change um, everything that you do. It's gonna be a really crazy journey and I really hope to see you along the way. <laughs>